in a previous video I was raving mad about Tambores de Guerra and how much I was enjoying it when I showed you the components from the prototype. This is when we get into the meat of things and I can show you exactly how to play the game and hopefully that will give you an idea as to why you should back it. So play we all. Tambores de Guerra is a game for one to two players and essentially it means it's a battle game, so you're going to be fighting with each other. It is a surprisingly simple game for everything that you can do within it. This, but let's, let's go step by step. First, the setup. Setting up the game is exactly what you can see on the table now. You place your board on the table, you have two decks, one for the humans, one for the non-humans, and you're going to draw five cards. Done. You put these tokens around, uh, which I will explain in a second. And this is your game. It takes about, I don't know, a minute and a half, minute and 33 seconds to, to prepare, which is quite welcome, I have to say. So that is it. So what are the components like? Let's take a look at them. These are the cards in uh, Tambores de Guerra, Drums of War, by the way, which is going to be translated the whole thing, so uh, you don't have to learn Spanish to play this game. Don't worry about it. I mean, it would be nice if you did, but you don't have to. So, um, these are the, the standard anatomy of the card, and each card is going to have um, all of these components. However, not every card is going to be the same, but let's take a look at one of them. In the card you find the monster or the human that you're going to be playing with, the cost that you have to pay to put this enemy on the board, and then you have a attack value. This is uh, the value it does to, to attack, and it has to get equal or higher than the defense value, which is with the shield, and then you have how much life how many points uh, it can withstand, of damage it can withstand. Lastly, this shows the kind of unit it is. In this case, because there are four heroes in, in brackets for each army, the heroes, which are the generals of the army that you have to defeat, come in three different tiers, bronze, silver or gold. They cost, uh, they cost a certain amount of units to unfold, but they are more or less powerful. And the idea is to give a bit of variety uh, and replayability to the game itself. Playing uh, the gold heroes is going to be a little bit more complex, but it gives a much, much tougher hero to play with. So it can be interesting. This balances itself out because at the beginning of the game, depending on what hero you're going to use, you have to take a few cards of the main deck. So if you play with a bronze hero, you don't have to take any cards out of the deck, but the hero is weaker. If you play with a gold hero, you have to take an awful lot of cards out of the deck, but the hero is tougher to kill. So the whole thing balances it out quite nicely and quite a lot. Uh, this banner here shows you the army that it belongs to, so there are no confusions when there are more expansions being published in the future. And each one is going to have, each hero, its unit is going to have a special ability that you can trigger during the game. This little clove here means that you have to discard this number of cards, in this case is 10, of the main deck randomly. You don't get to see what you get out. So you take the deck, 10 cards, put them out, and the remaining is going to be your army. That's that. The rest of the units are going to be infantry, war machines,
cavalry. Those are the main units, and then you have some monsters. As you can see, everything's been clearly marked with some easily identifiable icons, which are going to come very handy because some of the special abilities are going to be effective only against a specific type of unit. So you have to keep that very, very much in mind um, because depending on what you put on the table, you will be able to attack one enemy or another because the number of units are limited. When you learn how many units your enemy has already played, you can start to figure out how many units they have left and start to play preemptively. So you kind of can try and guess what's going to be played next. That could be an interesting one to do. You also have equipment cards and equipment cards come in two different ways. Uh, this one, which is something that would allow you to, for instance, one of them allows you to move a unit from one place to another or create a wall of shields to protect your units, so on and so forth. I'm going to give you all of them uh, because you, you know, have to find out when you get the game, which um, I really think you should. And these are the recruitment that does, well, different things. And believe me, play them wisely will mean the difference between winning or losing the game. They are very important and they are very, very handy indeed. Some pieces of equipment will require you to spend some cards, some shall not. You have to keep that in mind for reasons that I will explain in the next part of the video. How to play it. Once you have set it up, let me explain how the board works. The board has four distinct areas and within it, there are some squares that are limited, which is where you can to place your units. This area is the area of the discarded cards. Those are the units that are getting killed within the game. This area here and here, this is where you place your main deck. And that's where you're going to be drawing the cards from both to your hands and to pay for some of the abilities or the equipment that you're going to be using throughout the game. Here is where your general is going to go. This is the leader of your army. And here is where all the cards that you have used, that you've used to pay for, are going to come. Those are two different discard piles, okay? And, and we have to keep that very much in mind because here come the cards that you used to pay to put cards on the board and here, the cards that get killed when you're playing the game. Important, because at some point, if you run out of cards, you're going to shuffle one of the two decks to replenish your army. And if at some point you cannot shuffle the deck because you've run out of them, that's it. You lose the game. You don't want that. I really don't want that. So, once we know that, the next step is choose your general, and this is how we're going to do it. So how are we going to choose the, the leader that we're going to play with? To start with, it is recommended that you start with a silver one, which is, in the case of the humans, we get Aiden. And in the case of the non-humans, we get Krang. What do they mean? Well, Aiden has a special ability that a unit is going to get one extra attack point that one round, and it has a cost of one card. Now, can, uh, in order to uh, apply effects or to unfold units, there are two ways of doing. At the beginning of each round, we're going to take five cards in our hands. One, two, three, four, five, and these are six. Okay, and our enemy is going to take also five cards. This is the number of cards that we have to pay in order to bring them to the fray. So, because we're going to play with Aiden, we bring it 
here, and because we're going to play with Krang, we bring him here. Now, we throw this, which is like a coin that's going to determine who goes first. Yay! Um, I don't know why I say yeah, I'm playing by myself, so but that doesn't matter. So let's put these cards here for now. Okay, so now we're going to choose which one we want to put on the board and we're going to decide how we're going to pay for it. So for instance, if we wanted to have the ogre, which is a monster unit, on the board, we need to pay three cards of our hand. So this is a very expensive currency and we need to be very, very careful. One thing I didn't explain earlier, some cards have on top of the cost icon, one, three, or five swords. The meaning of this is, if you have, let's say for instance, I don't know, let's, I'm going to take out this alabardero, this uh, halberd kind of person. So let's call him Albert. Let's take Albert and we want to put him here because Albert is very keen on the general and wants to defend it at all costs. So we're going to pay two cards of our hand and uh, so we can, because you know, um, we, we have to do it as the rules. So I reckon that the catapult is going to be very hard to, and very, it is very expensive for later. And we have two knights here. So let's pay two of these cards and they come on this pile. We have two, hand, two, two um, cards on our hand and we're going to keep them here for now. Once one of the players has done one thing, the other player does their thing. And in this case, I think that I'm going to play the Lancer and I'm also going to put it here. However, if because you have three swords, what that means is that you would be able to attack the fighter in front of you and those adjacent to them. So this could attack my Albert and any that I decided to put on any of those, those two places. If instead of three had five swords, then it could attack anywhere. So it's a lot more versatile. Uh, but let's, let's, um, let's put that Lancelot is going to stay there. I'm going to pay two cards and I'm going to pay the Troll because it's three cards, so it is quite expensive. And the Warrior, for reasons that will become clear in just a second. And these two cards come here. The turn goes back to the original player, to the first player. And because the first player has an Ogre that costs three to put on the table, and I don't have three cards to play for it, or a knight that costs two cards and I don't have two cards to put on the table, I cannot do anything else. That's it. Done. But my enemy, myself, um, can do something because this card, the axe, costs one. But this little icon here means that the cost of this card is paid from this main deck, not from my hand. So if I wanted to play this card, and I do, thank you very, very much indeed, you place it underneath, take a card from the main deck, and you've paid it. Why is this important to keep in mind? Remember that earlier I told you that if you run out of cards, you need to shuffle one of the two decks in order to be able to replenish your army? The deck that you're going to shuffle is this one, not this one. So you don't want to put too many cards in here because otherwise you will not have enough cards later on that have been killed to be shuffled to replenish your army. So you have to be wise about that. But in this case, I do want to do it because this is going to give me plus two attack versus a confronted unit. 
that is the one that I have immediately in front of me, not an adjacent one. Not that I needed it in this case, but you know, why not else? And then, because this one cannot do anything, but I still can, I am going to play this card, which is Paints of War, War Paints, that cost me absolutely nothing to put it on the unit, and that is going to give me one point of defense. So suddenly, a Lancer that was a bit, oh my god, I'm never going to get to anything in life, how dreadful is my life? Well, suddenly it's a bloody tank. And we like that. Once we've run out of things to do in your turn, then we go on to the combat. Okay, now is the time to fight. This one is going to go first, and then this one is going to go first, but the attack is simultaneous. What does this mean? That Let's say that this one had a chance in hell of destroying Lancelot. It wouldn't matter. Lancelot would still attack. It wouldn't get killed, and that's the end of it. Or vice versa. So we're going to decide what we're going to do, or who we're going to attack first, but we're both going to attack each other. So, poor Albert attacks with two points, which does get to Lancelot. But, because Lancelot got one extra point of shield, which we can mark with a token, which I haven't done before and I could have, it means that it has three. That means that poor Lan you know, Albert is like, <laughs> and doesn't get anywhere. However, uh, Lancelot does, because it does two points of damage. This gentleman here has absolutely no way to protect himself and therefore gets one wound, but because he has one single point, one little heart, it's going to get killed. None of the abilities can be triggered this time, because Albert, the ability is that you, it's going to win one extra attack which could be quite interesting, and one shield, which would also be very interesting, against um, uh, cavalry, which this is not, because Lancelot is a mere soldier. And Lancelot, on the other hand, would say, if it's fighting against a monster, would win, would get one extra uh, attack point for each monster unit within its reach. So if there were two monsters in here, or three, suddenly he would be doing five attack points, which is like, damn, that, that's a tank. It's not the case. He would only do one point extra damage because of his ability. So poor Albert dies, and Lancelot lives to tell the tale another day. Next round, we top up our hand to... Oh, oh, your pardon. Uh, this is dead. I had two cards from before, so I top up three cards. So we have five cards in our hands again. But now the non-humans uh, begin the round because, you know, we're going from one place to the next. So one, two, three four, five cards. Um, I don't know who shuffled this deck. I'm liking it quite a lot because I'm going to get... Mm -mm -mm. Cavalry. Uh, see, this is a very good one because it allows me to be here, anywhere, and attack anywhere I like. This means that there is a new type of attack that I haven't told you about yet. Let me. Up until now, we haven't really spoken about this, and I've only told you about one winning condition of the game, which is running out of units to fight with. But there is another. If you destroy the general, you also win the game. And the generals are actually quite destroyable in this case, because they only have one hit point. Nothing else. So, from that point of view... Yeah. It's a good idea to fight them. Now, these units 
have one thing that you have to keep in mind, which is if they are confronted, that is, if they have one immediately opposite, then they have to fight each other. But if they are adjacent or they are far away, then they can try to attack the general. Exactly. You took the words right out of my hand. So you have to be crafty as to where you put who, where, so you can get to this one. So I'm going to place this card here, which is going to cost me two. So I already have a Lancer and I don't need two warriors. So I'm going to pay these two cards that come here so I can bring them there. Then this gentleman here is going to and this is where things become very tricky, because suddenly these, either of them could be attacking my general unless I put one in front of them, and one in front of each, so they have no choice but to attack uh, front row. However, I don't think I can do much about this. So I'm going to pay one card to put this soldier here, and I'm going to do that. And then I am going to put this one, which is going to cost me two, which is the two ogres that I have in my hands. Uh, actually, I, I did this thing at the same time, which is not a good idea, because I should have placed a goblin here, which I pay nothing for, and I keep this hand, this card in my hand. Okay, that's the turn. And yes, I skipped, uh, I skipped the step. So, we go into combat, however. Remember special abilities? We need to keep these in mind. I forget about them. This is the only thing about this game. There's a bit like, oh my God, keep this in mind. So one of my abilities in terms of uh, Aiden is that paying one card off my deck means I can bring the attack power of one of my units by one point. So I'm going to this meager soldier, I'm going to give them a tap in the shoulder and say, come on, you can do this. And now, Yay, he's so happy that he can attack uh, for one more power, um, which is great. Uh, whereas Crag says that every wound suffer gives him one extra attack. He's pretty healthy. He ain't getting anything new. However, this soldier also has a special ability that says if there is another, another soldier or a halberd unit in the battlefield get one extra shield. So let's give him one extra shield uh, and one extra attack. So one extra attack because of Aiden and one extra shield because there is another soldier in, in the battlefield now. He's not getting anything because he's not fighting a monster. The knight gets one extra point of attack if he fights in, if fights infantry, which is not doing. And the goblin ability says um, if there are more units from my own units, as in the enemy, as in the non-human units, more than the human units, then he gets a plus one to attack. So he's a little bugger, basically. So there are, so he gets plus one to attack, which is very good. Uh, however, he cannot attack anybody because he doesn't have anyone to attack right now. And because it's only got one sword, he cannot do anything. So he's there for no reason, basically. He's just saying, oh, hi, and then gonna leave. So we resolve combat. We go this way now. Lancer is going to do... <laughs> Wow, um, four points. So this is going to be destroyed again. He does two, but because he has one extra shield, this soldier is just going to be blasted into oblivion. Like so. Oh, and he doesn't do anything because he does two attack, but he's got three defenses. So... Pretty, pretty useless. Him, though, is going to attack. And he's going to do, well, two points. 
it's equaling, so it's going to do one wound. He attacks with two, he's got two points, does one wound. That means that they have killed each other. How clever. And they both disappear. This card also needs to be discarded at the end of the phase. So there it goes. So on and so forth. Rinse, repeat. That's it. This is how it plays. Trust me. It is way, way fun and really good. And if you think that this is powerful, the game is very well balanced because I just played with the designer and I kicked his ass playing with the humans. So it can be done. Believe me, it can be done. This is Drums of War. This is likely to be to, to your two-player go-to strategy game um, for now on because it's <laughs> really is exciting, very very exciting. Let me know what you think, and if you have any questions, uh, I would absolutely love to answer them for you. So, until the next time, thank you very much indeed for being there. I very much look forward to hearing what you have to say. So play wheel. <laughs>